there so that if somebody has to leave, they can access this. It'll be up on our website um, perhaps tomorrow. I certainly can always send a copy of it to anyone who asks for it as well. And I know that there were some people who were not able to make this time, but who were interested in this topic. Um, so welcome everyone to our, our webinar with the US Small Business Administration. My name is Anne Flad Jessen, and I'm joined by Jamie Zastro, our new executive director here at Progress Lakeshore. Um, for those of you who don't know, Progress Lakeshore is an economic development organization that serves Manitowoc County. Um, we are a public-private partnership, so uh, our funding comes largely from our municipal partners. Um, particularly the city of Manitowoc, Two Rivers, Keel, and the village of Mishicot. Um, and another uh, large chunk of our funding comes from private investment from local companies. Um, our objective is to strengthen the business climate here in Manitowoc County. And we do that in a whole host of ways. Um, we really say we work on retaining growing and attracting business to the community. Um, but that takes us in a whole lot of directions. Um, certainly in the last year, we spent more time and effort trying to support our existing businesses and help them survive uh, the pandemic than we might otherwise in other years. But we always do some business retention work. Um, Part of what we offer every year is a Let's Talk Business series. Um, and that really is a couple of speakers or webinars or events um, that are really geared toward topics of interest of the moment um, for businesses. So today's SBA administration or SBA webinar is we're considering under our Let's Talk Business series um, because we all know that COVID has played such a huge part in our landscape and we would love to learn more about what the SBA has and can do and is um, managing to support our businesses as well. So today I have with me, um, with us, Cindy Gardner, Cindy is the Outreach and Marketing Specialist um, with the Wisconsin Dr District of the U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA. Um, she also has a colleague with her as well, Lisa, and I will let Cindy introduce Lisa, and I'm just going to turn the screen over to them. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us, Anne, and thank you, Progress Lake Shore. Um, I'm Cindy Gardner, like Ann said, I handle Eastern and Northeastern Wisconsin, and Lisa Taylor handles Western and Northwestern Wisconsin as Outreach and Marketing Specialists. And so we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation here. Um, let me make sure I know where my, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Um, currently, the SBA is administering vital economic aid programs that are providing a lifeline to millions of American small businesses. We're working to ensure this round of relief is accessible to all eligible entities, including those hit hardest and those in underserved segments. The information in this presentation is current as of February 5th. And Lisa and I will share uh, many details about the current economic aid uh, program. Today, we will cover um, who we are, where we are, all the economic aid funding options, our current loan program details, including PPP and the economic injury disaster loan, grant program details, including targeted idle advance and the shuttered venue operators grant, and additional assistance and information on our resource partners. 
Where we are, um, Congress intended this round of the COVID-19 Economic Aid Act um, to support the hardest hit small businesses and those in underserved segments, including women, minorities, and veterans. The SBA is committing to ensure, uh, committed to ensuring the programs are launched as quickly as possible to deliver critical economic aid to American small businesses and other eligible entities. Um, today we'll cover the economic aid funding options. Um, we'll start with the payroll protection program, which Lisa will talk about. Uh, the pay protection program currently has served over 7.3 million small businesses uh, throughout the United States. Um, the, uh, the PPP is a forgivable loan provided through a participating PPP lender to cover employee payroll and other eligible expenses. And again, Lisa will go over that in just a minute. Um, the economic aid also offers debt relief on 7A, 504, and microloans. Um, and I'll talk about that later. We also have the economic injury disaster loan, also known as the IDLE. That's a long-term low interest loan. In addition, um, we have the targeted IDLE advance. And that uh, provides businesses in low income communities with additional funds to ensure continuity, adaptation, and resiliency. And finally, we have the grant program, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Um, that application window currently isn't open, but that is going to be a grant for live venue operators who have been affected by the pandemic. And now I will turn it over to Lisa so she can cover the PPP program. Wonderful, thank you, Cindy, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk about the PPP program today. And before I jump into that, I do wanna share some statistics as to where we are with the program and how much has been appropriated so far. So since the PPP reopened on January 11th, um, about, let's see, where's my, where are my numbers? 73% of the loans are 50,000 and under, and almost 90% are $150,000 and under. And the average loan size has been about $71,000. So um, for us, that's good news because it tells us that the program is reaching the smallest businesses and they're able to take advantage of that. Also at this point, uh, about 2.2 million PPP loans in the round for 2021 have been approved for almost $156 billion. Now the amount that was appropriated uh, by Congress was about 284 billion. So we've got about 156 billion that's been approved. Uh, we have through the rest of this month uh, for the program. So as you can tell, there should be plenty of funding to get us through the end of this month. So there's some top takeaways and we're gonna go over these in more detail as we go through the webinar. Um, but what the Economic Aid Act did for the program was to expand the PPP eligibility to some additional organizations. And it also expanded how the funds can be used. Additionally, a borrower can now select a covered period between eight weeks and 24 weeks over which to use the PPP funds. Um, prior to this year, so last year under the CARES Act, the borrower had to select either eight weeks or 24 weeks. Now with the latest legislation, legislation the borrower can select any time between eight and 24 weeks. There's also a new part of the program called Second Draw, and we're going to talk about that, but that was added with the Economic Aid Act. Uh, they are allowing for the deduction of expenses that were paid for with forgiven PPP funds uh, on your federal tax returns. There's also an updated and simplified forgiveness application. It's just a one page streamlined application form. And for those borrowers that had loan amounts of $150,000 and under, you are able to utilize this form which um, last year there was about 86% of all of the loans 
that were made under the program were for $150,000 and under. And now with the latest round, that's actually been bumped up to about 90% of all the loans are for $150,000 and under. Additionally, we no longer have to subtract the idle advance from the overall PPP loan forgiveness amounts. Next slide, please. So let's start with the first draw PPP loan. And the first draw is for eligible applicants that didn't receive a PPP loan last year prior to the window closing, which was on August 8th. So the loan eligibility now includes a few additional types of entities and we'll talk about that on the next slide. The covered eligible expenses have been expanded. So just as a review, with the PPP loan, you can use the funding on eligible payroll costs, which will include uh, cash compensation like salaries and wages, um, bonuses and sick leave and things like that, in addition to some uh, employee benefits. And then it can also be used on certain non-payroll costs, and those include rent, uh, mortgage interest, and utilities for your business. Now the expanded expenses are also under that area of non-payroll costs, and they now include certain operations costs, uh, certain supplier costs, uh, certain property damage costs, and that would be property damage due to civil unrest if you've not been able to get compensated by your insurance company or through some other means. And it also includes worker PPE, so if you are having to buy um, hand sanitizer and masks and things like that for your staff, that is now an eligible expense under the PPP program. Um, as I mentioned, you can set your covered period anywhere between 8 and 24 weeks. And there are now certain borrowers that can request an increase to their original PPP loan amount. And that's going to include some farmers, some seasonal businesses, and some partnerships. It's also going to include borrowers that had um, uh, qualified for a larger loan amount, but for whatever reason decided to take a smaller PPP loan. So for instance, if you qualified for $100,000 and you decided to just accept $75,000, you may now go back to your lender and apply for an increase on that original loan. And it also includes any borrowers that returned all or part of their PPP funds prior to December 27th of last year. Uh, in order to participate or be eligible for a first draw um, and a second draw, you must have been in business by February 15th of 2020. And the deadline to apply for first and second draw PPP loans is March 31st or until congressional appropriations are exhausted. Um, now, based on the numbers that I just shared, we do believe that there will be sufficient funding to meet the demand through the end of this month, uh, but we just need to say that if for some reason the funds were to be exhausted, then that window would close a little bit earlier. Um, Cindy talked about this loan being either fully or partially forgivable, and one way to maximize forgiveness under the PPP program is to make sure that you're spending at least 60% of those loan proceeds on eligible payroll costs, which means that you're spending no more than 40% of the funds on eligible non-payroll costs. Um, under this first draw, the max loan amount is going to be two and a half times your average monthly payroll costs, and that is either for 2019 or 2020. Next slide, please. So to be eligible for first draw, uh, you need to comply with size standards um, so that the SBA considers your business or your organization to be small. Typically, that is going to be 500 employees and fewer. Uh, there are some sectors in business that would qualify under revenue guidelines right, rather than employee uh, count. Um, however, as long as you're complying with size standards, you are eligible for first draw. Now that is going to include those entities that were eligible last year as entities under the PPP program, which is going to include sole proprietors and independent contractors and self-employed individuals. Um, even if you have no other employees other than yourself, it's going to include the eligible business entities such as partnerships, corporations, and LLCs. 
It also includes 50C3 nonprofit organizations, 501C19 veterans organizations, and tribal businesses. Now there is a group of newly eligible organizations, and that would be housing co-ops, destination marketing organizations, certain 501C6 organizations such as chambers, and then eligible news organizations. And the size standards for this new group of eligible entities is going to be 300 employees or fewer. Next slide, please. So Second Draw PPP is a very new part of the program and it was created with the Economic Aid Act. And it is for borrowers that previously received a PPP loan, have 300 or fewer employees, and they do need to show that they've suffered at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts. And we'll talk about how to figure that on the next slide. With this slide, we'll just talk about what the maximum loan amount is under second draw. And for most borrowers, that is going to be two and a half times their average monthly payroll costs for 2019 or 2020, up to a cap of $2 million. Now, if you are a business that's in the accommodation and food services sector, which means that your NAICS code is starting with 72, your max loan amount for second draw is going to be three and a half times your average monthly payroll costs, again, for either 2019 or 2020, up to a cap of $2 million. And the second draw has its own particular application form, but your lender is going to have that. So just like first draw, the second draw is a loan that you will go to your lender for, um, a lender that's participating in the program. They're gonna have all of the application forms and the instruction documents that you'll need. Next slide, please. So uh, to be eligible for second draw, you must have previously received a first draw PPP loan and your covered periods cannot overlap. So that covered period is anywhere between eight and 24 weeks. And if you've recently received a first draw PPP loan, just keep this in mind that your covered period under your first draw, which has to be a minimum of eight weeks, cannot overlap your covered period for your second draw. And those covered periods start on the date that the loan was disbursed to you. Um, the additional criteria is that you have used or will use your full first draw PPP loan funds only for eligible expenses before your second draw can be dispersed to you. Um, you have 300 or fewer employees and you do have to demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts um, between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. Now those quarters do need to be calendar quarters. So for instance, if you're looking at second quarter of 2020, which would be April, May, and June, you're gonna take a look at your gross receipts for 2020 and compare that to second quarter gross receipts of 2019. And if your 2020 um, quarter two gross receipts are at least 25% less than the 2019 quarter two gross receipts, then you've met this point of eligibility. Next slide, please. So the loan application process, whether it's your first draw or your second draw, is to find a lender. Um, for your second draw, you can certainly go back and use the lender that you used for your first draw. Um, you're not required to, uh, but it may be easier because they might have the paperwork already that you need to submit for your second draw, that supporting documentation. Um, but again, it's not required that you use the same lender both times. If you're looking at a first draw and the bank or the credit union that you normally do business with um, isn't participating in the program, there's a couple of places you can go. So specifically under PPP, you can go to sba.gov slash paycheck protection slash find. And it's gonna give you a list of PPP lenders that would be in your area that could help you with that loan. You can also go to sba.gov slash lender match. And the lender match program is available to business owners, um, whether it's for the PPP loan or for other SBA um, backed loans. And what it does is it matches a business owner with a lender who is interested in making that loan for the business owner. Um, so that business owner would go in, answer about 10 questions, 
uh, about their business and about the type of loan that they're looking for. And then within 48 hours, they would be contacted by lenders who would be interested in learning more to potentially make that loan for their business. Uh, Cindy is also going to talk about some of the local uh, SBA resource partners that are available to you and they can help you with your PPP questions. They can help you with um, other financial uh, questions or to search for the right type of loan for your business. They're also there to help in other uh, areas of your business as well. Step number two is that you would complete your application with your lender, including all supporting documentation. So the instructions document that you would have with your application is going to list any supporting documentation that's required to be submitted as well. And then step number three is that once your lender submits that application to the SBA, the SBA is going to do some compliance and fraud checks. And once those checks are done, they're going to go ahead and send the loan number over to your lender. And just a reminder again that at this point, the deadline to submit an application for first or second draw is March 31st. Next slide, please. So if there's any part of your PPP loan uh, that is not forgiven and has to be repaid, the loan terms are the same now as they were last year. So all PPP loans have a fixed interest rate of 1%. There's no requirement for collateral or personal guarantees. There's no fees or prepayment penalties. There's a five-year maturity on that note if your PPP loan was approved on or after June 5th of 2020. If you had a PPP loan that was approved prior to June 5th of last year, then you, you have a two-year repayment period, um, but you can certainly work with your lender to get that extended to five years. Your payments would start once your lender uh, communicates that with you, uh, once they know how much of the loan is not going to be forgiven and what the payments would be. There is a 10-month deferral period on this program, and that deferral period starts with the last day of your covered period. So during that 10 months, you do not need to make any payments on the PPP loan. If you were to, um, for whatever reason, not apply for forgiveness during that 10 months, then you would need to start paying that loan back at the end of the 10 month deferral period. And the process for the forgiveness consideration is that once you submit your forgiveness application and any required documentation to your lender, they have 60 days to review that. Uh, once they send it to the SBA, the SBA has 90 days to review your application and your documentation. And once they've made their determination, they're going to send that information to your lender. And your lender would be in touch with you to let you know if there's any amount of the loan that's outstanding and needs to be repaid, what those payments would be and when they would start. Next slide, please. So the forgiveness aspect of this program, there was a, a few changes made, a few updates made with the Economic Aid Act. And again, you're gonna go back to that original lender to apply for your loan forgiveness. The idle advances are no longer deducted from the overall PPP loan forgiveness amounts. So if last year you applied for the idle loan, which was the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, uh, directly with the SBA. That was uh, really the only loan that you would ever go to the SBA to apply for last year. There was a period of time during which uh, those applicants were being given an advance. And that was anywhere between $1,000 and $10,000 based on the number of employees that you had. Well, that advance was intended to be a grant, but under the CARES Act uh, language, the SBA was required to deduct the amount of that advance from your overall PPP loan forgiveness amount. The Economic Aid Act has changed that language. So the SBA is no longer deducting idle advance amounts from the overall amount of your PPP loan forgiveness. Additionally, any expenses that you've paid with PPP loan funds, whether those are forgiven or not, are federally tax deductible. And a couple of weeks ago, the legislation in the state of Wisconsin also changed so that on your state tax return, any expenses that you've paid with PPP loan funds, whether they've been forgiven or not, 
are now de uh, deductible on your state income tax return. Those expanded or additional forgivable expenses that we talked about earlier um, are permissible for any PPP loan that hasn't gone through the forgiveness process. And then that streamlined and simplified forgiveness application is available to all borrowers that have loan amounts of $150,000 and under, uh, which again, as we talked about with the initial statistics should apply to the majority of you. So most of you should be able to use that very simplified and streamlined forgiveness application. And additionally, the forgiven PPP loans are not considered to be federally taxable income. Next slide, please. So at this point, I will turn the webinar back over to Cindy to talk about some additional programs. Thanks, Lisa. Um, now we'll move on to the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan, also known as the EIDL. The EIDL loans are direct loans from the federal government. The EIDL has existed for many years and has historically been used to help businesses and communities after natural disasters. This is the first time it's been used nationally and for a pandemic. And I'll just give you some um, statistics here. As of February 25th, nationally, over 3.7 million EIDL loans have been approved for over $200 billion. And in the state of Wisconsin, over 38,000 EIDL loans have been approved for a total of $1.9 billion. The EIDL provides economic relief to businesses experiencing a temporary loss of revenue due to COVID-19. The Economic Aid Act passed at the end of 2020 extended the EIDL application deadline through December 31st of 2021. EIDLs are low interest long-term loans that can be used for working capital and normal operating expenses, such as continuation of healthcare benefits, rent, util utilities, and fixed debt payments. The EIDL offers reasonable terms. They are 3.75% um, fixed for businesses, 2.75% fixed for nonprofits, with a maturity of 30 years and no prepayment penalty or fees. Collateral is required for loans over $25,000. And payments are deferred for one year, however, interest still accrues. Borrowers can make payments if they choose to do so in that one year period. To qualify, businesses must have been in operation on or before February 1st of 2020. Small business owners, cooperatives, and qualified agricultural businesses with 500 or fewer employees in all U.S. states and territories are currently eligible for the COVID-19 EIDL. Agricultural businesses include those businesses engaged in the production of food and fiber, ranching, and raising of livestock, aquaculture, and all other farming and agricultural related industries. EIDL loans are direct loans from the SBA. You do not apply for an EIDL through a lender. Rather, you go to the SBA's website at sba.gov disaster, and you can find the loan application there. And now we'll move on to a new program with the Economic Aid Act. It's the Targeted EIDL Advance. The Economic Aid Act provides uh, $20 billion for the targeted EIDL Advance program. And this means that up to $10,000 of grants will be available to those in low income communities who previously received a CARES Act EIDL Advance for less than $10,000 or for those who applied for the CARES Act EIDL Advance but received no money because its $20 billion funding was exhausted. The SBA will balance out a previous EIDL advance to the full $10,000 if the business is one in a low income community, two has suffered greater than a 30% economic loss, and three has 300 or fewer employees. Now this is the first priority group for the targeted EIDL advance. 
The second priority group are those who applied for an EIDL advance but didn't receive funds due to lack of funding. You, um, borrowers will receive a full $10,000 if they meet the same criteria as above and per funding availability. The SBA will reach out to those who may qualify via email with instructions to determine eligibility and to submit documentation. Make sure that the email comes from an email that ends with sba.gov. We want um, people to be careful and be aware of uh, scams and fraud. So again, just make sure that if you do get invited to participate in a targeted idle advance that the email you get from the SBA ends in sba.gov. And I won't spend much time talking about this slide. Um, it just is um, outlines items needed to verify eligibility and to submit your application for the targeted idle advance. And again, for those eligible, you'll receive a direct email invite from the SBA. Again, here's another slide about the targeted idle advance for those that are invited. This is the application process. I just wanna point out that it's really important to make sure that all information in your application is complete and correct um, because you, the SBA will not take uh, reconsiderations with the targeted idle advance. So if your application goes through and there are errors on it, it'll automatically, um, you'll automatically be denied. And if you, if you are invited to participate in this program, you can submit application questions to targeted advance at sba.gov. And now we'll move on to another new program introduced with the Economic Aid Act, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Uh, the application window for this program is not yet open. However, there are some things that um, the Shuttered Live Venues can do to prepare for the applications. Um, you can apply, or excuse me, you need to um, log on to the federal government's system for award management at sam.gov and register there um, for the grant. And that process takes about one to two weeks to um, get approval. So you'll wanna do that as soon as possible. Eligible ent entities that are um, able to apply are live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations and motion picture theater operators, relevant museum operators, zoos and aquariums, talent representatives, and up to five business entities owned by an eligible entity. Um, eligible entities um, have to have been in operation as of February 29th of 2020, and the venue or promoter must not have applied for or received a PPP loan on or after December 27th of 2020. And we recommend that you visit SBA's website at sba.gov slash SVOG for current, current information on this program, including eligibility requirements, FAQs, and a SAM.gov registration video tutorial. And I just wanna point out that um, eligible applicants can qualify for the grant equal to 45% of their 2019 gross earned revenue with the maximum amount available for a single grant award of $10 million. And $2 billion of the 15 billion allocated for this program is reserved for eligible applications with up to 50 full-time employees. Again, for more information on this program, um, go to the SBA's website at sba.gov svog. And this slide uh, is a cross-program eligibility matrix. Um, this is a general basic overview, but not all inclusive of the details of the new and current economic aid that is available or forthcoming. And you can see on this matrix that if you received a PPP, you can still apply for the EIDL. However, the funds can't be used for the same purposes. This matrix is 
is also on the SBA's website at sba.gov slash coronavirus relief if you would like more information. And now we'll move on to the SBA back loan debt relief. And the SBA is providing debt relief and payments on certain SBA back loans. Borrowers who have a 7A, 504, or microloan may be eligible for SBA back debt relief depending on when the loan was approved and additional criteria. If you are one of the borrowers who meets the criteria, the SBA will automatically provide debt relief. You will get a letter from the SBA on official SBA letterhead outlining your debt relief parameters. And if you have questions about this program, um, please contact your lender. Again, um, in general, we want everyone to be aware of potential scams. So any correspondence you receive from the SBA should come on official SBA letterhead or should come from an email address ending in sba.gov. And one more thing to mention about the um, debt relief is that PPP loans are not eligible for this debt relief program. And here we'll go over key takeaways um, from our webinar. Again, the PPP is a program that closes on March 31st and you should contact your lender to apply for that. Uh, debt relief, the SBA will automatically um, provide debt relief to certain 7A, 504, and microloan borrowers, and you will be contacted through a letter from the SBA. Um, the IDLE is a, long, a low interest, long-term COVID-19 economic injury disaster loan, and that remains available through December 31st of 2021 or until funding is exhausted. The targeted idle advance, uh, the SBA is reaching out to potential el eligible applicants uh, through an email invite for that targeted idle advance. And finally, the SBA is creating the Shuttered Venues Operators Grant. That application window is not yet open. Um, however, we do recommend that if you are a shuttered venue and you do wish to apply for this, you go to SAM or SAM.gov to register your venue for the grant. Now we'll move on to the SBA resource partners. Our resource partners are independent organizations funded through SBA cooperative agreements and grants. And we highly recommend contacting a resource partner if you have business counseling needs, um, such as writing a business plan, or if you need help with um, strategic marketing or a marketing plan, or if you just have general questions about financing, um, and you need more information on SBA programs. Our resource partner services come at no cost to business owners, and many of them offer low cost business courses as well. In Wisconsin, I'll go down the list here, we have the Small Business Development Centers or the SBDC network. Um, they are located on the four-year UW campuses. Right there is the answer line. You can contact them at the 800-940-7232, or there's um, a website address that you can go to to find the resource partner for the SBDC in your area. We also have the Women's Business Centers in Wisconsin. Um, in throughout Wisconsin, there's uh, the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative Corp or WIBIC. They're located throughout the state. We also have the Western Wisconsin Women's Business Center. And you don't, you don't need to be a, a female owned business um, to use their services. They can help anyone. We also have our SCORE mentors. This is a national organization of volunteer business professionals who can help with your specific business counseling needs. And the volunteers are considered experts in their profession. So if you have a question about um, needing help with a business plan, you can certainly contact SCORE and they will hook you up with um, a business professional who can help you with that. 
And finally, we have our Veterans Business Outreach Center, our VBAC. Our statewide representative is Dan Newberry. And uh, the VBAC is available for veterans and active military members and their family members who are looking to start a business or need counseling for an existing business. And again, please reach out to our resource partners for your business needs. And they're all great people to work with and they're very knowledgeable. And finally, um, stay connected with the SBA. Uh, here's, here are ways to stay connected with uh, the Wisconsin District Office. You can sign up for our e-newsletter e at sba.gov slash updates. And the e-newsletters go out weekly and contain all um, new and current information and updates. Uh, we, are, we also have a social media on Twitter um, you can email the Wisconsin District Office at wisconsin at sba.gov if you have any questions regarding any of our programs, and your email will be routed to the appropriate person who can answer your question. Um, the, the Wisconsin website is sba.gov slash wi, and on that web page you will see um, a calendar of all of our upcoming webinars and events. And then here at the bottom, we've got the sba.gov website with all information on the current coronavirus relief options, PPP and SVOG. And that concludes our presentation. And uh, we'll open it up to questions at this time. Thanks, Cindy. That was very uh, helpful and very interesting. Uh, thanks to both you and Lisa. Is there, um, does anyone have a, a question that they'd like to pose to Cindy or Lisa about any of these programs or what the SBA does and has to offer? I have a question in the chat. Um, I have two questions. Let's see. Is there any indication of when the SVOG app will open? Uh, we don't know right now. Uh, we are told that it'll be soon. So we don't have any further guidance on that. What we do recommend is that um, live venues that have been shuttered go ahead and go to the System for Award Management, uh, SAM.gov website and start that process to be eligible for the grant. And then uh, when the application window does open, that you're ready to go and you've already got that part of the process complete. The other question was uh, very similar. It was, it, it was asking really the same, the same uh, question. Yeah, and what I will do is uh, we have a 20 page frequently asked question document that just came out a couple of days ago um, for the SVOG. And I, I'll send that to Anne after we are done here and then she can share that with everyone. That would be great. I'll, I'll share that. Um, I'll try and email folks who have registered for this webinar and we will also post it on our website. I also wanted to note, um, and I did put a note in the chat if anybody was able to see it, um, on one of your last pages when you listed you um, the different SBA um, partners, um, mm -hmm. Progress Lakeshore is happy to and does a lot of helping coordinate connecting people with those partners. So we can sit down with you and have a conversation about um, where you're at, where your um, friction points might be and or what you're trying to achieve and then help you kind of figure out maybe what your next step is and whether you want to go to the SBDC for some assistance and, or to access a SCORE mentor. Um, maybe it's accessing a, a lender, a SBA approved lender or other lender. Um, so if you're not really sure where to go, um, I'd encourage you to contact us and we can try and help you figure out what your next step might be.
Okay, any other questions out there? I am not seeing any in the chat. Um, I'm not seeing any hands raised at the moment either. Uh, I got a message, very helpful information, thanks. You're welcome, I would agree with that, very helpful. Thank you. And like I said, if you have any questions after this, um, feel free to, to email the Wisconsin office at wisconsin at sva.gov. Okay. Excellent. Well, I wish you all well in your endeavors to try and strengthen your business. And I thank you, um, Cindy and Lisa, for your time and helping us here. That was uh, really wonderful. Um, I'm certain that the SBA will be hearing from some of us. Fantastic. Well, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Have a good afternoon. You as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.